as it visits sources of contamination. Being a true insect, the housefly has three distinct body parts. A head, a thorax, and an abdomen. The head bears the eyes, antennae, and mouth parts or proboscis. The surface of each of the large compound eyes is divided into approximately 4,000 facets or individual lenses. The eyes of the male housefly are spaced closer together than those of the female. Between its compound eyes, the housefly also has three ocelli or simple eyes. But in spite of this elaborate equipment for seeing, the housefly depends mainly on its highly sensitive antennae in detecting odors which are attractive to it. The interesting feeding organ or proboscis can be retracted almost completely into the head when not extended for feeding. The end of the proboscis is a spongy heart-shaped structure composed of two lips or labella which the fly presses against any substance upon which it desires to feed. The wings and legs of the fly located on the thorax provide excellent locomotion for the fly in its incessant exploration. Both wings and legs in contacting filth become important factors in the disease spreading activity of the fly. Each of the fly's feet is equipped with a pair of claws which are used for clinging to rough surfaces. Some segments of the legs and feet are sensitive to taste. On each foot, we see from beneath a light colored structure. These are the pulvilli. The pulvilli have the special function of making the fly's feet stick to smooth surfaces. Thus, the fly can walk upside down on the ceiling or climb walls with ease. This feature, although helpful to the fly, makes the fly a more dangerous transmitter of disease, since its sticky feet pick up germs and parasites and distribute them everywhere the fly walks. The housefly's respiratory and digestive systems extend through the thorax and the abdomen. The abdomen also encloses the reproductive system. Breathing is accomplished through holes or pores called spiracles in the body wall. The feeding and digestive systems of the fly add still another manner in which the fly spreads disease. Here we have an animated diagram to give us an idea of how the digestive system functions. When necessary, the fly pumps saliva from its salivary glands onto its food to help soften it. Oftentimes, it also regurgitates partially digested food from its crop to help liquefy food it wishes to eat. The proboscis then sucks up the food, germs included, into the esophagus. The proventriculus directs the flow of food into the crop. Supposing this fly were to alight next on your strawberry sundae, the filthy germ-infested food in the fly would be regurgitated. The fly's feet would add more contamination. A single housefly has been known to carry over six and a half million bacteria at one time. It becomes obvious why houseflies are such a health menace. Houseflies lay their eggs anywhere they find the kind of media or food on which the fly larvae can feed when they hatch. An uncovered dirty garbage can is an open invitation to breeding flies. Fly larvae or maggots are a common sight in unkempt garbage cans. Accumulations of animal refuse are also ideal breeding places for flies. Thousands of fly eggs may be laid in a manure pile within a few hours after the manure is dumped. Here you see masses of the tiny white fly egg. The heat given off by the decaying refuse helps to incubate the eggs. The female fly has a long tube or ovipositor through which the eggs are laid. A single house fly lays an average of 100 to 150 eggs at a time and may lay up to seven batches of eggs in an average lifetime of two or three weeks. The pearly white eggs are so tiny 
that 150 of them can rest on a pencil point. In warm weather, the eggs usually hatch within 8 to 24 hours. A slit appears in one end of the egg, and the tiny white legless larva or maggot wriggles out of the egg case. The maggots immediately commence feeding on the decaying food matter in which they find themselves. The maggots immediately commence feeding on the decaying food matter in which they find themselves. Within an average of 5 to 14 days in temperate zones, they will be full-grown larvae. While they are growing, they go through three distinct larval stages called instars. At the end of each of the first two stages, or instars, the maggot molts its skin. When ready to molt, the old skin breaks open at the head or pointed end and slips off as the maggot crawls away. The maggot has hook-shaped mouth parts for feeding and to help it crawl. We have placed the maggot on this stick to see the crawling action more clearly. And now let's watch this action in slow motion. The maggot extends its body forward, anchors its hook-shaped mouth part, and by muscular contraction, pulls its body forward. Maggots have no antennae or eyes, but they are sensitive to light rays, and they immediately seek to find cover when exposed to light. The black dots on the tail end are spiracles, through which the maggots breathe. When fully grown, the maggots reach a length of one-third to one-half an inch. Soon thereafter, they move to a nearby drier area to pupate. Here, the last skin of the maggot shrivels up and becomes the brown, seed-like protective coat of the pupa. We will now see, by time-lapse photography, how the color of the pupa changes. In summer temperatures, the pupal stage lasts an average of five days. Larvae, which pupate in late fall, may remain in the pupal stage until the following spring. When the transformation from larva to fly has been completed, the fly pushes off the end of the pupal case. Here we see flies breaking out of their pupal cases, aided by their expanders. The expander is a sac located on the head of the fly. When it is time for the fly to emerge, body juices inflate this sac, causing the pupal case to split open. When the fly's head is free, it struggles out of its pupal case. Sometimes the emerging flies find it necessary to work their way up through debris, such as leaves, manure, or sand that has covered them during the pupation period. The fly's expander sac then comes in very handy. By alternate expansion and contraction of the sac, the fly is able to open a passageway ahead of itself, and with the aid of its legs, it can escape to the surface. After the fly emerges from its pupal case, its exoskeleton hardens. Body juices flow into the wings to expand them. The transparent wings stiffen as they dry. The fly's various body parts take on their characteristic coloration. The fly's expander disappears, being withdrawn into the head, never to be seen or used again. Now, a new generation of flies is ready to carry on the spread of filth and disease. Not too many flies heed that age-old invitation, come into my parlor, said the spider to the fly. Since there are not sufficient natural controls to effectively reduce the fly population, man must assume the responsibility for stopping this notorious public health enemy from wandering at will in our community. But swatting flies one by one, while millions of new ones are hatching, will never begin to solve the fly problem. Now, my fellow Americans, the tide has been running against freedom. Our people have followed false prophets. We must and we shall return to proven ways. Not because they are old, but because they are true. Now, we Americans understand freedom. We've earned it. We've lived for it. We've died for it. But ladies and gentlemen, first, we must renew freedom's mission in our own hearts and in our own homes.
Post after it, I can cut it together. How about an oh my god again? Is this really happening? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Holy shit, it's real! I knew it was real! Okay, I'm done. Go this part. Okay, I'm done. Oh yeah, that would be genie. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna give zombie killing instructions. <laughs> I do zombies! Ah! <laughs> uh oh. See, that's the creepiest of all. <laughs> Are you getting this? Are you getting this? Get that smile off your face, clown. <laughs> Here you go. Hold that for a minute. Just leave it rolling. All the cigarette smoke in the car, too. Oh, uh, no, it says battery. Hmm? It says batteries flashing. Oh, that means it goes with this one now. It wasn't Wait. flashing a second ago. Yeah. We should get an in, we should get an in van shot. What are you laughing about? <laughs> See what people with cameras? Holy shit, they really are coming. <laughs> Your host, our host, what? no, oh. Andrew Danger Brindleson. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Monday Night Comedy Show. My name, My is, name is Andrew Danger Brindleson. If you haven't been here, we've been doing this online to keep you safe. Here at the Monday Night Comedy Show, we care about your safety. We encourage you to wear masks, wash your hands after you poop or pee. 
or touch your face, do anything, you know, just follow the, uh, you know, the CDC's guidelines. Just, you know, believe in yourself and each other. Trust that everybody's going to be wearing a mask. And if you know people who don't wear masks on purpose, then uh, I don't know, cut their brake lines. Um, give them uh, two or three good stops. And hopefully you live in San Francisco. Speaking of San Francisco, we do have a performer tonight streaming in from California. Of course, it's Wonder Dave, our uh, form former poet Lafayette of the Monday Night Comic Show, who got us uh, no end of uh, wonderful performers uh, back in the day, back when we were at a Christian coffee shop in Uptown. My, how we've grown. So uh, thank you, all of you, for joining us. If you like the show, you don't have to pay to watch it, but if you're independently wealthy and invented Velcro or some sort of synthetic fiber, uh, why not Venmo us some money so we can distribute it amongst the performers tonight? Because if you don't know, there is a global pandemic going on and uh, the government has stopped those that $600 weekly check for a lot of people. So people are hurting. So if you're not hurting, why not give until you bleed. Um, and let me tell you folks, tonight the the show is it's a really good show. It's uh we had we had one cancellation. Unfortunately, Kathleen O'Brien could not join us tonight because she's not feeling well. And our 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 thoughts and prayers go to you, Kathleen. But in reality, we just hope you get better. We're not really giving you thoughts and prayers. Um that's offensive to me, and I hope that you don't think that we're praying for you. Um, but we do wish for your speedy recovery. Um to our pagan gods, various though they may be. Um, but uh, instead of uh, Kathleen O'Brien, we uh, have figured out Tara Kilbride's video that she sent us from Berlin, Germany. If you don't know where Berlin is, just check a map, all you future cartographers out there. And uh, it's it's in uh, it's in the old country. In you turn left at Bavaria, and it, you'll find it. But uh, uh, we uh, don't worry. We have content for you tonight. We have three fantastic comics live in studio here at Nano Taco Studios in North Minneapolis. That's right. That elicits something. I like it. Uh, <laughs> We have two uh, two of our friends streaming in. I mentioned Wonder Day from uh, from San Francisco, California, but we also have Josh Kangas from St. Louis Park, Minnesota. Hey! What? That's where the Cohen brothers are from. And I used to live there in an apartment with Levi. I, yes, thank you, one person. Excellent. Remember those glory days when I could drink a half gallon of vodka every night and watch prison documentaries with my roommate? <sighs> I'm sorry, I was lost in thought. Anyway, um, shall we begin the show? I think so. Ah, Kruger, I can't help but notice you're in a new perch this evening. J Money, the motherfucking hawk, <laughs> caw -caw. Can Yes. They, can, they, can they see you right they now? Yeah, I just put myself on. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, Kruger, uh, in addition to uh, Kat Morgan, uh, who are, they are controlling the, the vertical and the horizontal. So uh, don't adjust your internets. Just trust that they're going to press all the buttons that they need to press. And if they don't, ain't no big deal because we fly casual at the Monday Night Comedy Show. Thanks to copious amounts of drugs. We're not saying what drugs. It may or may not be generic Prozac that some of us are on. If you have generic Prozac and would like to sponsor the Monday Night Comedy Show, go no. right ahead. I think that's drug trafficking. That uh, Just Venmo us the drugs. That's That'll do just fine. Speaking of, when you read a good book, it's a lot like doing a line or two of cocaine. Having a bender all night long with your favorite author um, if you don't know that glorious feeling, well, by God, you should. And what better way to start you on a journey that you cannot possibly return from than the Monday Night Comedy Show Book Club, where we read a page a week from a volume of forgotten lore. We've chosen Full House. Stephanie, picture me famous. The middle daughter of the Tanner family has a lot to say and a lot of adventures to experience. Um, we're on page 18. That means we've done this for at least 18 weeks. 
We just read one page a week. And when we're done, in 2023, ideally, if we don't skip a week, we'll, we'll, we'll just sit around and, and talk about it and drink a, uh, some sparkling catawba and uh, do shots of... It does. Well, I didn't say shots of what. It was uh, going to be fireball. So, you know, oh, oh, come on. We're all better than that. Oh, man. Okay. All right. Here to read page 18 of Picture Me Famous. Please, everyone on the internet and in the studio, freak out and scream. Because if you scream and freak out and clap all at once, it sounds like there's a lot more people in the studio. Aaron Isaacs, folks. Aaron Isaacs reading page 18. You are, sir. Welcome. Welcome. Woo. Yeah. Because my glasses, my glasses would fog up, and then I couldn't read, and I can't read anyway. So, <clears throat> way to her locker. That was the middle of the sentence. I mean, professional writers have to write really well every day. They have to write A plus material every time, not C plus. Well, if I'm not a talented writer, maybe it's time I find something else to be talented at. Stephanie decided. Something that I'm really good at, something that will make me famous, something that will make Kyle notice me the same way he noticed Amber Armstrong. Yeah, that's right. Boo Amber. Yeah, Amber Armstrong. She's like the first picked in the uh, alphabet. Okay, whatever. When Stephanie opened the front door of her house, Alex and Nikki, her four-year-old cousins, ambushed her on her way to the kitchen. They each grabbed one of her hands and said, Look, Stephanie, a doghouse. What? A doghouse is in? Then Stephanie saw the boys were pointing, or saw what the boys were pointing to. In the middle of the living room floor sat Comet with the couch cushions and pillows banked up on all sides of him. The twins had made a doghouse for their golden retriever with pillows draping an afghan over the entire structure. Comet looked nice and cozy in his little house, Stephanie decided. Just then, her uncle Jesse came running from the kitchen. Fresh tomato sauce stains on his apron and his shiny black hair almost standing on end. That's the end of the... Oh! Yeah. Oh! Oh! You the end of page... Give up for Aaron Isaacs. <laughs> Aaron, Aaron Isaacs, folks. He just he just ran into the the infinity wall in this in Nano Taco Studios. Um, are you okay? Oh, very good, very good. It was great. It, you you caught yourself. It was very good. Um, you know what? We fell in love with you reading page eighteen of Picture Me Famous. One more time for Aaron Isaacs, folks. You're going to see him eventually at uh, some point in the show doing, uh, doing stand-up. Um, but before we do that, uh, we, for a, the last several weeks, seven weeks, in fact, we've been uh, lucky enough to be able to show episodes of The Bitter Baker, a web series that is outstanding, uh, done by uh, Tiffany Norton. If you don't know her, definitely, definitely try to be her friend on Facebook. I'm not sure if she can even accept friends because... She's so popular and good. Uh, but The Bitter Baker, definitely go to that page on Facebook. Like that page. Go to the YouTube page, Bitter Baker, so you can watch all of the episodes all at once. You can binge the hell out of it. Uh, but we've been able to watch them in an order every week, um, thanks to Tiffany loving us for some reason. I don't know. Uh, we know where she hid the bodies, but uh, she agreed to let us watch uh, show these. This is episode eight. It's a blooper reel. Uh, of some of her, uh, some of her past episodes that you're gonna absolutely love. It's super funny, and uh, she films this in her in her in her uh, condo. Um, so, folks, please put your hands together for the Bitter Baker episode eight, the blooper reel featuring Tiffany Norton. <laughs> Yeah. Even if it's good wine. I know. It's exploding on my hand. I'm just gonna do it like. No. 
if I die alone in this apartment, mm -hmm. it won't take long. Yeah. Because the hospital's right there. <laughs> and decided to Winona riding a Riesling. <laughs> Almost. Almost. All right, whenever you're ready, go for it. <laughs> Cheers. Oh my God. Cheers, big ears. I didn't work in this at all. Okay, give me another one. That was like Jackson Pollock in my <laughs> Oh I know. I do. Oh, shit. I'm so sorry. And we're done. Baker, um, you might notice that uh, things are a little bit clunky and weird uh, only because uh, we uh, I am not sitting at the podium anymore. Kruger is 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 at, uh, at the podium where I was uh, for the last several weeks, and uh, I'm up here trying to emulate what we did uh, back at uh, at the Springer when we were in a basement bar with very little ventilation. So uh, now we are at Nano Taka Studios. And, uh, and we're, we're, uh, and we wear masks when we're not performing on stage here. And uh, if you would like to come showcase to me, all you have to do is message mncstwincities at gmail.com or just send us a message. 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 Just send us a in charge of our business and uh and you know, then the sky's the limit um so uh we have a lot of people who haven't been writing as much as they they used to with this global pandemic uh but we have people who have been writing nothing but comedy because you, in, during tragedy you must laugh and uh, thank God for them. So, uh, folks, if you have any inkling of uh, being on a weird internet TV-ish type comedy showcase, the longest running comedy showcase in the Twin Cities, that can be verified by science. We started in Not 7. Just send us a method. We'd love to have you. Um, the more the merrier. Um, but uh, we, you know, you need to contact us because uh, so many people are trying to touch us and our faces. Speaking of touching our faces, Kruger, do we have Wonder Dave and Josh Kangas? I would very much like to welcome you guys. Welcome, Josh. Welcome, Wonder Dave. We are so happy to have you uh, streaming in. Uh, uh, the funny part is, is that uh, our next performer just went back to sit down because I'm usually very long-winded in between comics. However, and, and I am, and I'm sorry. Uh, you might remember him from reading page 18 of Picture Me Famous, the Stephanie Tanner novella from Full House. Such a good job. Thank you, thank you. Hey, you know what? Um, yeah. I, yeah, I believe in myself, and I believe in all of us. So without further ado, everybody clap and freak out. Make lots of noise. Make your hands do the clapping time for Aaron Isaacs. I'm so I'm so fucking dumb. They told me to come up. You're like, oh, you're next. And then I heard you're like, oh yeah, we have Wonder Dave. I'm like, oh, I'm not next. Why am I standing <laughs> ready to go? Everyone says you're first, and I'm like, oh no, he's Wonder Dave and the guy in St. Louis Park. I live in St. Louis Park. I could have stayed there, but no, this is a nice place. Um, I'm sorry to the child I kicked. I thought there's this wall over here. It's further. I. <laughs> I fall down a lot though. Like, uh, you ever fall down and laugh and then realize you're bleeding? Like, <laughs> I was just laying on my back in Uptown because I deliver deliver pizzas. One of the few jobs you can uh, have during the pandemic. I walked out of an apartment building and didn't realize there was a step, and I fell. I'm just laughing on my back, and then I touch my knee and there's blood everywhere. I'm like, oh. This isn't that funny. Okay. Um, 
when this when i'm taking uh covid seriously though like i'm not doing stand up uh in person this doesn't count and i'm not i'm distancing i'm doing everything but at the beginning of of lockdown and everything i was so lonely i was like i would love anyone to talk to like a stranger could call or text me and i would love that and now in <laughs> in october with the election, it's like, please make these strangers stop <laughs> calling and texting me. I can't, I don't care about Tina Smith. I'll vote for her. I just don't need to text you about it. Um, yeah, it's weird. Someone from a campaign texted me and was like, hey, this is your neighbor, Deborah. Uh, who are you voting for, for whatever local thing? And I'm like, I don't have a neighbor, Deborah. <laughs> I don't, and then she's, I was like, I was like, are you my, like, I don't have a neighbor, Deborah. She's like, I'm not your neighbor from your street. I'm your neighbor from your city. And I was like, I don't live in Minnesota Senate District 44. So that's a lie too. <laughs> <laughs> Please leave me alone, Deborah. And neighbor does mean like on your street. Like I didn't want to get into semantics with her, but she was wrong. Okay. Uh, what the fuck is it? Oh, I can't even read my own handwriting. St oh, hey, one nice thing about lockdown is if I'm ever in line at like Chipotle or the liquor store, I know exactly how close to stand to someone. Like that used to create a lot of anxiety, right? I'm like, am I too close? Am I too far away? You know, now I'm like six feet. Great. I used to do eight. I've been having weird dreams during COVID, which no one wants to hear about your dreams, but I'm going to tell you about one. I had this dream. I was sitting with some people right next to a four-way stoplight, and there was this postal truck just driving so fast at a red light. I was concerned. And then right as it got to the red light, it took off into the air like there was a rocket underneath it, and then it landed on this building next to us. And I look at the three people at the table with me. I'm like, holy shit, did you guys see that? And then someone turns to me and just goes, yeah, they do that. <laughs> like I'm getting owned in my dream. Okay. Maybe the people at home laughed at that. Um, I saw buffets are reopening, which is like if you wanted to die even faster than eating yourself to death, you can <laughs> catch COVID there now. <laughs> I also don't get why people are dating. Like I used to feel bad at myself for being unsuccessful in dating, but now like unsuccess is the new success, right? <laughs> like it's like, yeah, I haven't, I haven't kissed someone in years before the <laughs> <laughs> years before COVID. I'm was way ahead of this. Um, probably gonna go under. I hope that's okay. All right. Uh, my mom. I love my mom. She told me the other day, she's like, Aaron, I'm not getting fat. I just have big abs. <laughs> so don't call my mom fat. I don't know what the <laughs> fuck that was. I'm sorry. I don't know. Um, Trump is accusing Biden of packing the Supreme Court. Have you heard this? Oh, gosh. I think they should pack the Supreme Court and then light it like a fat bowl. <laughs> I think my mom might be watching this. Um, did you guys hear? Are you guys on Twitter? Yeah. Did you hear about that that 19-year-old woman that married a 90-year-old guy? And was like, no, I just love him. It's not for the money. And <laughs> he was like super rich and he like worked at her at his nursing home or something like that. <laughs> and it's crazy. This guy's 91. Like she thinks he's going to die. I think this guy's going to outlive him, her. <laughs> I think he's going to outlive her. He's killing it at it. She, on the other hand, very young, hasn't lived that long. There's no precedent for her living a long time. But <laughs> it would seriously be so funny if this woman spent her 20s married to like a geriatric. <laughs> I thought I won the lottery. I'm wiping his shit. Um or what mouth whatever uh she was 
<laughs> yeah, whatever. No, yeah, you know what? That's enough of that. We don't want need to hear about nineteen year old fucking a ninety year old. And she was fucking him. Like when you're ninety, you can't fuck anyone. Um. <laughs> all right, I have one more bit that I wrote pre-COVID, so it might actually be good. Um, my mom was kind of old when she had me. She was forty-two. And my whole life, people loved when they hear my mom was 42 when, they, when she had me. They loved to tell me. They're like, there was like a way better chance that you would have had Down syndrome. That's what people tell me all the time. Like, what do I do with that information? You know, then I figured it out. Anytime I see someone with Down syndrome now, I'm like, hey, my mom is old too. Oh, God. Solidarity. All right, I'm Aaron Isaacs. Thank you. Ew. Aaron, I. Oh my God. Ah, uh, it was Aaron. Aaron, don't leave. I was kept trying to, but then you trip on a thing. There's lots of chords and things here in the studio. Uh, to trip on, uh, but Aaron, Aaron, come back up here, come back. Uh, we forgot, I forgot oh, yeah. completely to give you this uh, because you read page eighteen of Picture Me Famous. We'd like to give you this certificate, suitable for framing. Uh, saying thank you for reading page eighteen. Oh, we're gonna hold it up to a camera. We're gonna yes, chest level, chest level on me. What? Here we go. Just we got there. We got there. All right, everybody on the internet is doing screenshots of that. One more time for Aaron Isaacs, everybody in the studio, yeah! Oh, my goodness, that, um, <laughs> beautiful. Um, how many people, by sound of applause, because we're gonna pretend that we have uh, a thousand people like we usually did at the Monday Night Comedy Show, uh, pause for laughs. Um, how many people have already voted? A couple of people, good people in the studio, excellent. Um, I, I have not voted yet. I am going to vote in person because my, um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, I have not, sorry, I'm sorry. I, I just like being over here in the darkness. I'm not gonna get in the, no. I have a darkness about me. No. Fine. Okay, it's hot over here. Very good. All right. Mm. <laughs> if you guys can't hear this, the oh now okay. I'm trying to center myself. There we go. The uh, the folks at Nano Taco Studios are fucking hilarious, and uh, I love them, and they want me to look good on stage, which is impossible. <laughs> Jokes on them. Anyhow, speaking of voting. Be sure to vote November 3rd if you haven't done the mail-in voting. Um, and, and if you're looking to get a little bit of knowledge in your brain pan every day, uh, be sure to follow uh, Heather Cox Richardson, which uh, on Facebook is an outstanding way to uh, actually get informed without, uh, you know, well, it does make you puke in your mouth a little bit, but it's well-written. And uh, and uh, Heather Cox Richardson is a, is a very smart person, smarter than me, uh, because I... Um, I'm mad at the South for the Civil War still, and I was born in 1978. That's irrational. I'm an irrational boy. I can't get over it. I just, I just, you know, the only thing they've given us is pecan pie. That's it. And maybe, like, I don't, jambalaya. Oh, chicken and waffles are really good. Okay, you're giving... Stop defending them. Anyway, they lost the war, and I'm mad about it. Okay. I love, I love how... No, I'm no, I'm no, I'm not mad at that they lost though. I'm mad that they think they won. Some, I, look, let's move on. I, okay. how is it possible for me to derail an internet show? How, how like that? That's some sort of talent that I could put on my resume underneath ukulele and accordion, which are blatant lies. But no, I, nothing. I think let's just not point that out. Okay, very good. I want to point out our next performer who is a very good friend of the Monday Night Comedy Show from St. Louis Park, Minnesota. Everybody freak out for Josh Kangas. Welcome back, Josh Kangas. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm going to start. Okay. Um, 
I'm going to start with some uh, joke jokes tonight. Uh, then I'll get into my usual rambling nonsense that I normally do. Um, you see, when I do a, one of these internet shows, I like to start off by describing exactly what I'm going to do. That's not for your benefit. It's, uh, it's really for me because when I get on a webcam with an audience, my first instinct is always to take off my clothes and start masturbating. But enough about my day job. Anyway, um, I have decided to start tonight with the dumbest joke I've ever written. So I'm going to need all of you to breathe a little bit more deliberately until you feel your heartbeat slow down. Uh, this will cause less blood to go to your brain, so you will literally become just stupid enough to appreciate this joke. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. So I love animals. When I'm on a long drive, I like to look at the pastures and farms full of cows, horses, buffalo, whatever. It brings me peace and makes me happy. But more often than not, when I decide to look at the animals, inevitably one of them will be taking a massive shit. Kind of ruins the whole experience. This is why I wish unicorns are real. That way, I could be driving past a unicorn pasture and I could go, Hey look, a rainbow! And that was the dumbest joke I've ever written. Thank you very much. You can now turn your brains back on. All right, more joke jokes. Um, so today is Columbus Day. Um, I don't recognize it personally. If I wanted to celebrate a rapist and murderer who spread disease, I'd vote for Donald Trump. Uh, let's see. Also, I've never liked kids. I mean, if I wanted to hang out with someone who was selfish, needy, always wanted food, and always craved attention... I'd hang out with a comedian. All right, now on to the rambling nonsense portion of my set. Uh, I've been going on a lot of walks lately, about two hours a day, actually. Uh, so let me drop some truth bombs about what it's like to be a fat guy who goes on long walks. It's not always pleasant. Of course, there's the usual blisters, but those heal quickly and you get used to it. The real problem is thigh chafing. Not fun to get back from a walk and you have to peel your underwear off of your scabbed and bleeding skin. So the solution is soft fabrics and lots of lotion. Applying lotion to your inner thighs requires a very specific motion. It's like a dog trying to dig under a fence. It's like... <clears throat> and uh, obviously all that sweat down there contributes to the growth of crotch mushrooms. I won't explain crotch mushrooms again. I've done this before. But if you're truly interested, check out my YouTube channel and you'll learn all about those delicious pubic truffles. Uh, I've been getting a ton of sun, as you can easily see from my vampire-like complexion. There actually aren't any lights on in my apartment right now. This is all just bioluminescence from my glowing skin. I go on walks like I'm playing a stealth game, you know, just jumping from shadow to shadow so I can avoid the sun. Yeah, but even in October, there's still bees around. I'm terrified of bees because I've never been stung by one, so I don't know if I'm allergic. That would be a hell of a way to go, huh? Just walking around the neighborhood, get stung by a bee, my face gets all swollen, I get covered in welts, and I pass out dead in one of my neighbor's leaf piles. No one would find me for days because they would think this just a really macabre Halloween decoration. Wow, Bob, swollen white corpse on your lawn. You really outdid yourself this year, and it even glows in the dark. Uh, but walking around a suburban neighborhood in Minnesota during a pandemic is kind of weird. It's outdoors, so no one really wants to wear a mask, but we still take social distancing seriously. So when I'm on a sidewalk and someone is coming towards me, one of us will inevitably move to the street. But you don't really know who. It's like the slowest, most polite game of chicken. Speaking of the game of chicken, does anyone actually do that in real life, or is that just a movie thing? Because when it happens in movies, I never believe it. Someone always ends up driving straight and then someone swerves out of the way, when really the most likely scenario is that both people would swerve out of the way, and possibly even in the same direction. So they both end up being chickens, and they're both dead, too. Not really a joke there, just an observation. So what was I talking about? All right, Minnesotans. Um, Minnesotans are polite, but they're also humble. Like me, I've lived my whole life here, but I know my limitations. For example, while I am the funniest comedian in the world, uh, seriously, look it up. The United Nations passed a resolution a few years ago called the Josh Kangas Recognition for Excellence in Comedy Resolution of 2017. Not the catchiest title, but, you know. 
Um, I still have the plaque, but I'm too humble to display it here. Anyway, even though I am objectively, according to the UN, the funniest person on earth, I know that there are things that are always going to be funnier than me, and that's okay. In fact, just to show my humility, I'll give you a few examples. Anything posted on Facebook between the hours of 11 p.m. and 4 a.m. Horribly misspelled, borderline incoherent, deleted the next morning, and always pure gold. Also, I think sex is just inherently funny. Two people with serious expressions on their face while all these squishing and farting sounds are going on. Come on, how do people do that without laughing their asses off? I don't get it. Oh, what else? Oh, yeah. Screaming goats. I think goats are nature's comedians. They just have this constant dead-eyed look on their face like they never have any idea what's going on. And then they scream. Bleh! Yeah, gets me every time. Oh, goats. They really are the goat. There, I ended on a dumb joke, too. Anyway, my name's Josh Kangas. Hope you guys have a good night. Josh Kangas! Josh Kangas from St. Louis Park, Minnesota! I'm sorry I'm late getting to the stage. I was trying to find an app that was apropos for Josh's set. Get it? Screaming goats. I have I have an app for that. Um, and it's very rare that I have apps for anything, but uh, hopefully it works because screaming goats are the funniest thing on the on the planet. So uh, hopefully you can hear this. Oh, is it really loud? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I don't know how audio works, but uh, you can just you can just go to your Google Play or Apple app thing and look up Screaming Goat. It's nice. It's. Hey, Andy, can I uh, bring up my comments that I just got for a little bit ago? Um, yeah, because I love comments. Go ahead. So, from Sherry. I believe she's on. Uh, she's on the East Coast. If I'm, she is on from the East Coast. Yeah. Yes. yes. She, yeah. Sherry's been uh, been watching and commenting uh, for several weeks now, and we appreciate her watching. Um, and uh, I I did see a, a a comment that she's she's comforting one of her best friends. So hopefully hopefully your friend is 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 doing okay. Uh, if not, uh, we suggest uh, making their night even worse by. Uh, Telling him to log in to the Monday Night Comedy Show that cures what ails you every time. Uh, it cheers me up every Monday, despite despite me living in this nightmare world. Um, speaking of nightmare world, your next performer um, lives in the same world I live in, except he is uh, eternally optimistic because he's a much more successful person than I am. Um, and, uh, actually has more friends and is better looking. So, um, in traditional Monday night comedy show style, I hate him. And this is his last performance at the show because, uh, fuck pretty people who are funny. Um, I'm, a, I'm petty, but at least I own up to it. Right? I mean, that 612-296-6500. If you'd like to fuck funny people that are Whoa. Funny, the that Whoa, I'm not trying to fuck anybody. I'm just, oh. I'm just, you know, yeah. I'm just maybe some hot chocolate and watching some Legends of Tomorrow. I don't know. <laughs> That's why we have to have production meetings. We should have production meetings anyway. But seriously, if you do want to fuck me, that's okay. Um, I, you know. <laughs> <sighs> okay. <laughs> it is a global pandemic, though, so safety first. Uh, we have to do it from, uh, well, uh, through, a, through a Zoom meeting or through StreamYard. I'm paying 25 bucks a month for the service, so why not use StreamYard? We only use it on Mondays. Anyhow, speaking of Mondays, here's a friend to the Monday Night Comedy Show. You might know him as the owner, proprietor, and host of the greatest comedy show ever that happens sometimes at Spring Street Tavern, Though, during pandemic, it's only happened once. Um, you know, shit, shit gets real when, you know, people have coughs and shit. Uh, so you, you wear masks, okay? If you wear masks and socially distance like normal fucking people should these days, 
then you could have the greatest comedy show ever. Instead, you have a weekly Monday night comedy show. It's like your, it's like, it's like the coupon day of comedy shows. So once a month, greatest comedy show ever. Here's the host, your friend and mine, Mr. Nick Piontek. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm pretty on Monday Night Comedy Show scenarios, which means normally there's a lot of alcohol involved, but we're doing this virtually. So drink and I get better looking. Um, this is the most beard I've ever had uh, ever in my life. I'm 37 years old. Uh, I have this beard and I'm really proud of it. Um, I wouldn't, the people on Tinder do not consider me pretty. But um, Monday Night Comedy Show, He's jelly. I'm a five in the real world. Um, I'm going to. I weigh as much as an offensive lineman for the NFL right now. I'm not doing good with me. Um, I drink so much the liquor store stopped carting me five months ago when I have a mask on. They're like, we, we know, we know those depressing eyes buying giant jugs of Tito's two at a time. <laughs> from just your eyes. We don't have to card you because the eyes say at least 30. Um, I wanted to take a moment and tell everybody to vote. Um, yeah, because if you're thinking about not voting and you do end up voting, you're most likely gonna vote for the person I'm gonna vote for and that's why all these advertisements are there. Um, go out and vote. Even if you're not voting for the person I'm gonna vote for, that's your right as an American, it's the last thing they haven't taken. Go vote for whoever you want and I will do my best for the rest of the time that I have to not get political. Yes? Go vote, right? All right. With that being said, I'm going to do my first joke that I just wrote last weekend. Um, I don't want anyone, uh, I usually try not to get very overtly political, um, but I don't want anyone to get sensitive or snowflake you're upset because the name of this joke is Tucker Carlson has the smallest penis in the universe. Not the city, not the county, not the state, not the country, the whole universe. And before I tell this joke, I'd like to tell you that I, Nicholas Piontek, firstborn, only born son of Harold and Cynthia, did his own scientific research on this subject. I didn't, I'm not just telling you Tucker Carlson has the smallest penis in the universe. I have done scientific research and not to brag to all these fine people in the studio, but I do have a high school diploma from an alternative school and not one of the alternative schools where they send like Asians who are good at math, but like where they send white kids from the suburbs who have three minor consumptions. Um, that's the alternative school I have my diploma from. And I did the research on Tucker Carlson as the smallest penis in the universe. Um, I went to a bar. I don't remember what bar it was. Um, but I remember I was at this bar, and this girl literally yelled it from the bar, and she said, Dr. Carlson has the smallest penis in the universe. <laughs> and at that exact moment, she is the only female I have ever heard bring up Tucker Carlson's penis. So from a poll perception, 100% of the women on this planet <laughs> think Tucker Carlson has the smallest penis in the universe. <laughs> I did a poll of one woman. I didn't even talk to her. I just heard her screaming this from across the bar. She seemed like she did her research. I believed her. I'm not going to lie. And, uh, and what's funny, what made me laugh about that was like 20 years from now, they're going to discover some microscopic organism um, on Mars. And they're going to be like, we, it took a billion dollar microscope to see this organism, and it still has the smaller penis. It still has a bigger penis than Tucker Carlson, um, and that was what she believed, and I thought that was hilarious. Um, I'll refine that joke. Um, the other hilarious thing is I woke up today, this is absolutely a true story, and the first thing I saw on Facebook was a guy arguing with my friend Don Felix. My friend Don Felix is a German doctor. He was an EMT. He has multiple degrees and things that I can't even repeat to you because I've had too many drinks. Um, and he was arguing with a guy who said, uh, studied at GED on Facebook. 
And uh, that guy was saying that Donald Trump, after coronavirus, should get to work from the White House. And his point for making this was Donald Trump should be able to work from home because that guy works from home. And he literally said in a comment, he goes, what's the difference between me working from home and Donald Trump working from home? And I must have commented 47 times about how funny it is that that dude in his three bedroom, one bath bungalow is comparing that to the fucking White House. <laughs> I'm still laughing about that. I was like, do you hire 1,300 people just to cook your food and do your lawn? Oh, no, you have a $180,000 house in South Minneapolis. Um, would you like me to go on to where the White House and your bullshit Trump? I'm sorry. I'm getting too political. Um, <laughs> but these are the arguments that I've been having lately with people. They're like, why is my house different than the White House? Um, they have armed guards. Do you have armed guards? Do you have all of the... Um, people running all of the world coming in and out of your house? No, you have an Amazon package coming and it wasn't even <laughs> yours, it was your neighbors and that's fucked up. Um, I, uh, what am I doing with my time? I have some more jokes. Um, what am I doing with my time these days? Um, I am what's called unemployed. Um, I've been doing that. I actually had to stop myself today from buying a $250 office chair because I had to remind myself that I haven't worked in six months. <laughs> I like was at checkout on Amazon going, this is a nice leather chair. That's a great deal. And I'm like, what the fuck am I going to do with that chair? Put it in my garage. <laughs> click. It's going to be a nice chair for me to click that unemployment online. Just tick, tick, tick. <laughs> like, that's, what that, that's what that did. Um, I... Um, Oh, God, I have so much stuff. All right. Um, I am moving out of North Minneapolis. I have been, I love to tell my jokes about North Minneapolis because North Minneapolis has actually been really good to me. And um, my favorite jokes is, um, I, and I'm just going to go through them because I'm a little sentimental, but um, one of my favorite jokes to always tell is um, I loved going to the corner stores because the corner stores always loved me. They knew I was paying in 20s. I smelled like weed. Um, I wasn't going to steal anything. Um, is what they thought. And so they would always kind of <laughs> be like, it was like I was the closest thing to a therapist they would ever have. I would come in, I'd be like, how's your day going? Which is what white people say to other white people, right? White people, we just go, how was your day going? And, uh, but this guy would always like, he'd be like, some dude shot at me and three people stole. And, uh, and, but the best part of this was, is everything in the corner store expired like 12 years ago. So I can literally get you starter jackets, brand new, and it's <laughs> it's insane. Uh, there's two gallon things of milk that were literally October 2018, and he's like, "Deal on cottage cheese." It's just a great, <laughs> it's a it's a great ordeal. But one of my favorite things that I love to tell, and I set that up because I very rarely tell this joke, is the only bad thing that's ever happened to me in North Minneapolis is my mailman tried to steal my laptop. I will repeat that statement that I just said. My mailman walked into my house and tried to steal my laptop. And my dogs cornered him and I pulled a gun on him in my underwear. And the only time in 18 years I've ever had to call the Minneapolis police was for this scenario. And I literally called 911 and I said, I am pointing a gun at my mailman. He tried to steal my laptop. And it, I swear to God, the 911 operators, there's probably three times they ever said this, but they were like, sir, what did you just say? <laughs> and I was like, my mailman tried to steal my laptop. Should I kill him? <laughs> the dogs want to kill him. And in the background, it says, bah, 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 bah. and he's like, sir, please. And I'm like, no, the dogs really think you should get a death sentence right now. I'm not a dog, but they seem like good judges of character. Um, and the police literally came to my house. So if you want to know if you're from the suburbs and you want to know what it's like to live in the city, um, the cops came to me and they were like, what do you want us to do? Arrest him? And I was like, yeah, he was trying to steal my computer. Could you do that? And they were like, well, he's the mailman. <laughs> and I was like, so I should become a mailman so I can just steal shit. Is that what we're talking about right now? And they're like, well, what do you want us to do? The only time in 18 years, they were like, well, what do you want us to do? I was like, solve a fucking crime. 
Me and the docs did 75% of it for you. He's there. <laughs> Flip him in handcuffs. Move him out of my house. Do you want me to just blow a knee off? What am I doing here? And they're like, well, what are we supposed to do? I don't know. Are you police officers? What do police officers do? <laughs> Solve crimes? Is that what you guys do? Could you do that right now? <laughs> I've already not sh killed this guy. <laughs> I've done what you need to do right now. <laughs> Look, I got him and I didn't kill him. So... Do you want me to teach an instructional course or what am I doing here? Uh, maybe I should be the mayor. Anyway, um, I, uh, I have, um, what else? What other North Minneapolis stories do I really love to tell? Um, one of my favorite things, and I'm going to tell this story, and, and I very rarely tell that, and I'm assuming I'm getting towards the end here. Um, but one of my other favorite stories is um, I had one of my worst relationship moments that anyone will usually have, and I very rarely tell this story. Um, but I was dating a woman and I broke up with her and she decided that when I broke up with her, she was going to take a stool and destroy my house. So she started destroying ceiling fans and everything in the house. And I was like, it's not a big deal. I'd rather get rid of her. But then she kicked my puppy who ended up being my dog, Louie. Um, and I don't accept kicking puppies. Okay. And I'm not trying to just call her out. She literally kicked my puppy. So what I did is um, I took a giant shit in her purse. Um, and that was how I broke up with her. And uh, the best part of this is I put her purse outside of my house and she went into my neighbor's yard and started screaming at me and how cool your neighbors are in North Minneapolis. My neighbor was like, hey, are you all right? He texted me and he's like, are you all right? And I was like, yeah, I'm all right. And he's like, well, there's a crazy half naked woman yelling about you shitting in her purse in my backyard. Are you okay? <laughs> That was what he said. God bless Ben. He was like, is everything okay with you? Because there's a crazy chick in my backyard, and I'm not complaining about it or trying to murder somebody when they have no weapons on them, north side. Um, but are you okay? And I was like, no, some ceiling fans went down, and I think Louis has maybe a scratched rib or something. Um, and he's like, so what am I doing here? I was like, I don't know. Call the cops. Maybe they'll shoot her. I don't know. I'm, just, I'm joking. I'm sorry. Um, that was too far. That went too far. I'm sorry. Um, one more? Can sure. I, I have some time? Yeah. Um, all right. What joke should I tell? I did some new stuff. I can do some more stuff. I, don't, I know you hate when, uh, what should I do? Okay. Um, one of my other favorite things, um, one of my other favorite jokes to tell is about my mom. And uh, I love my mom. Uh, I was raised by a woman who was a strong woman, beautiful, brilliant woman. Um, but she says the funniest things to me that ever existed. Um, when I was uh, about 12, she sat me down for the birds and bees talk. And what she said to me was she said, Nick, Nicholas, which is three times she called me by my full name. And she said, boys have hot dogs. Girls have Twinkies. Good luck. <laughs> now, if you're watching this online, I would like you to Google what a Twinkie looks like. And feel free to Google what a fucking vagina looks like. And those things look nothing alike. There is zero similarity to either one of those things. Up until I was like 23, I was watching girls ride bikes go, how the hell are they not squishing cream everywhere when they're doing this? Um, that is a real story that my, that my mom said that. And then the fucked up thing was I was 12, so she said hot dogs first, and I had like a half-bitten mini corn dog at best. Um, I'm like, am I missing some parts? What the hell is going on here? Um, if you want to see if I was missing some parts, I did the show two weeks ago naked. Um, <laughs> you can see how that goes. <laughs> may or may not. I did a really good job at being face down on that one. But uh, one, of the other, one of the other brilliant things that my mom said to me, and she's always really good about just everything that she says, but um, a couple birthdays ago, she called me on my birthday, and she, she said, Nick, I'm so proud of you. You're a brilliant comedian. You're, you're great. You're, you work hard. You do everything. You work hard. You treat people with respect. I'm so proud of you, and I can't believe you're 35. And the problem was is I was uh, 36, and I was about to turn 37. <laughs> so my mother, who has one child in this entire universe, completely forgot how old I was. 
And it wasn't because she didn't know that I was born in 1983. It was because she didn't know it was 2020. And that's what gets a little scary about the whole situation. Um, um, I'm going to do uh, that. That That's it. Uh, thank you guys for letting me do the show. Comedy is weird. I hope I made you laugh. And uh, I love you, Monday Night Comedy Show, and the whole studio, everybody around here. Vote. Um, what is it? November 3rd? Yep. Vote November 3rd if you're a Democrat. Vote, vote November 5th if you're not. <laughs> <laughs> One more time for Nick Biotech, everybody. Everybody. Woo! Hey, we, got some, we got some comments? Yeah, we got some good comments. So, yeah. Um, first, David Mutter uh, added, I donated $10 oh. for the help Tucker Carlson get therapy for his small penis body. <laughs> uh, it's so tiny. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, David. Thank you to anybody who uh, has the means to uh, to donate to the performers. Uh, Venmo.com backslash Monday Night Comedy Show. Kruger, you have more? Yeah. Um, Sherry Ellen Baker suggests we give him a sports car. Ooh. Yes. And uh, David Mutter said Dick is killing it. Mm -hmm. And we got uh, Sherry Ellen Baker with a very, like, the tilted, laughy face. I don't know what it's called. The ro maybe rolling on the floor laughing or something? I don't know. Sure. Rol yeah. R Rol Rolfing. R O L F. Rolf. Lol. 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 YOLO. Some, yeah, I don't know what the gang signs are, but yeah. But, uh, well, thank you, everybody. Uh, keep keep commenting. Comment away. Comment on, on uh, Twitter. We don't have a, we have a Twitter. I forgot the password 10 years ago. Um, I think it's still active. Maybe you know my password. It's a variation of a band I was in in high school and some numbers. I forget. I, you know, um, but uh, Nick Piontek, uh, I, I like, I like his, uh, his, his survey of one person. <laughs> for, Thompson Reuters should uh, hire him uh, for his. <laughs> he, should, he should. I would actually, I, I would I respond to more political polls than uh, if, if it was just Piontek going like, how big do you think his dick is? I, I don't know. I don't know. This one chick. Yeah, there's this one girl. There's this one girl that I've heard about. Anyway, uh, uh, <laughs> we have a special treat for you. Uh, we show videos uh, from uh, local performers here at the Monday Night Comedy Show because we're able to now and uh, do so relatively clearly and easily. Um, and uh, our next video, we have two videos coming up uh, next. Uh, uh, one, uh, you can go to YouTube and subscribe to uh, the Sheep channel. Sheep is the production company that's run by Joey Hamburger, one of our favorite performers here at the Monday Night Comedy Show. Uh, this next video was written, shot, edited by him. It's uh, starring Iris Rose, Rose Page, uh, and it's it's called Birds, and I selected it out of uh, his myriad of, uh, of videos available on his YouTube page because it made me laugh so damn much. I think it's brilliant. I hope you like it. Uh, folks, enjoy Birds by Joey Hamburger. She woke up with the birds, like she did the day before, and the day before that, what felt like a few days before those. She made breakfast while they sang. She drank coffee and began to sing back. She stared out the window, and they stared into the window. Should she let them in? No, they were birds. She should greet them, but she herself was not a bird. One day they left a gift for her, a nest of her own, a little too small. She bedazzled it with charms to show she understood the gesture. The birds liked this. The next morning they sang louder than before. Today might be the day that she joined them. She hiked to the tallest peak and stood on the tallest structure. Fly bird, she heard them say. Fly, fly, fly. She went to bed reminding herself she was definitely not a bird.
Sheep on YouTube. Go to their YouTube channel. Follow Sheep. You can uh, actually find it just by Googling Joey Hamburger. And uh, and <laughs> please subscribe. Like the video. It's so good. That was Bird, uh, Birds uh, by Joey Hamburger, uh, starring Iris Rose, Rose Page. Um, and once again, the production company is Sheep, local production company by our friend Joey Hamburger. And we're going to show more Joey Hamburger videos uh, in the coming weeks. So, uh, you know, if you... Go to YouTube, like the channel, and then never watch anything and wait until the Monday Night Comedy Show to show them. Um, not only does that screw our friends, but it does kind of help us. So, uh, you know, uh, we, we just appreciate you watching our show. Um, sometimes during the week, rebroadcasts happen on nanotacostudios.com, which you can like on Facebook as well. That's the studio that we're in right now. You see all this stuff? All of this is a studio. We're not in my, this is not my living room anymore, folks. This is, this is the big time. Yeah, we did it. We've, we've truly made it. We're in a studio in North Minneapolis and we have to bring our own booze. You know, like it's cool. Like what? <laughs> like royalty has to bring their own booze? I mean, they can afford it. I suppose. I don't understand you. You're a mystery to me. I anyway, understand you. oh, I really you that's fair. That's fair. Uh, once again, a reminder to Venmo.com and tip the performers. Uh, we'll make sure that we uh, Venmo you Venmo us. We Venmo them. It it's a thing that we do. Um, so if you have the means, it's more than uh, appreciated. It's uh, we we heart you and we click like on your donation. So uh, next video is actually a set from a friend who used to be in Minneapolis. Then she went back before the pandemic hit. Uh, she went back to Berlin and recorded a set for us. Uh, she's a very funny comic. Please put your hands together for Tara Kilbride from Berlin, Germany. For you. Woo. Woot. Yes, that's right. Tara Kilbride. There it is. There it is. Tara Kilbride. been a while it's been a while um you can't tell but i'm in my little berlin flat now and i've just come back from a show where i bombed uh i know it's uh, it happens you know when you're doing a lot of sets but um you know tomorrow's another day we keep going we keep moving we keep working um you haven't heard my new material yet so uh first of all how was your summer wait for a response very cool, very cool. Yeah, my summer was shit. My summer was shit. I um, I recall this time in college, my friend Nikki told me, she said, Tara, if you want to be successful in life, you just got to find something that no one else wants to deal with and get good at it. So I work with children, specifically German children, the most horrible people on the planet. Like, I don't know any other species of kid that could be both that annoying and adorable at the same time. It's maddening. They do this thing where it's called emming, where they just look up at you and go, em, 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 fuck my life. Fuck my life. So these, these, these German parents, they send their children to me, and I'm supposed to teach them English. Bless their hearts. But I'm kind of pissed at the parents. It's like, listen, if you're going to send me the most annoying German speakers, I'm going to send them back talking like the most annoying English speakers I know. So pretty soon, little Greta at the dinner table is going, um, excuse me, we ordered more schnitzel a while ago. Give me the manager. They send me a Greta. I send them back a Karen. Fuck you, Jan. Your kid sucks now. Um, other than that, uh, things are going fairly well. I was I was in the States during lockdown. I, I'm still doing some processing. Um, you know how like when you're at your folks' house, you just become a younger age version of yourself? I started potty training again. I got real drunk one night off a bottle of shampoo and uh, tried to stick the fork in the electrical outlet because I was curious. Oh, it's like four months of progressing. Now I'm back in Berlin and brought a date home one night. 
got super nervous, so I just ran and hid behind the couch. That was awkward. I started screaming and taking off my clothes. Usually in Berlin, um, people would be fine with that, but he was he was not impressed. Um, he had told me, Terry, you're so beautiful. And I was like, yeah, I know you are, but what am I? Didn't hear from him again. Mm. I've been reflecting upon my own childhood. I grew up an only child, or as my mom likes to say, a surprise gift from God. <laughs> Still processing that one. We grew up in a small town outside Fargo, North Dakota. Uh, said no one confidently ever. And uh, we didn't have a lot of money. So my cousins and I, we used to like to roller skate in the kitchen. We were so broke, we had to share one pair of skates for the five of us. One would skate and the rest of us would just imagine what it might feel like. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The stepfather was kind of an ass. He was into pyramid schemes back in the day, but we were so broke, they were just triangles. Couldn't afford to fill them in. Kind of a two-dimensional sort of guy. This is just generally where I lose the audience completely in the set. There's like usually like one guy who's like losing his shit, just loving everyone, dead silence, crickets. Um, this is where I take a pause and recalibrate. And then I win them back. So uh, I got sober. Thank you, thank you. A lot of a lot of clapter here. And I say uh, four, four years ago, but um, I'll still take the applause. Thank you. I like the validation. Um, I used to actually work in mental health. Now I just work with comedians. Because uh, why switch gears now? You know. But no, comedians are great. They have this really awesome way of of taking their pain and their anguish and somehow turning it into Marijuana addiction, mm -hmm. it's a real, it's a real alchemy. I've always admired it. Um, you know how someone, some people get sober, their dating life improves, they're like, wow, I was such a mess back then. For me, everything's the same. It's like, wow, I still have the shitty taste in humans. It's my own fault. I'll be scrolling through Tinder and being like, oh, it doesn't do feelings, sign me up. It sounds like a good time. My therapist literally told me, Tara, I think you're an avoidant. So to get back, I just blocked her number. Hmm. I don't know what she's trying to prove. Tend to go into situations halfway in and halfway out. Um, remember this time before lockdown, I usually date men. However, hmm. I found myself in the situation where I was flirting with this girl at the end of a party. Things get a little touchy-feely. She turns to me and she goes, what are you so afraid of? I didn't know what to say, so I just said, ghosts. and flying. I never heard from her again. She was German though, so it kind of came out like, what are you so afraid of? Like everything coming out of your mouth because that language really is really quite harsh. You know, it is funny being an American in Germany. Um, for the first several months, I had a lot of funny mix-ups. Uh, I went to the park with a friend and he said, do you want anything to drink? And I texted him, Vasa mit gas, because they like fizzy water, the bubbly water here. Autocorrect thought I typed Vasa mit Haas, which means hate. So my friend shows up and just tosses the bottle of water in my face and calls me an arselog. That's why I've been making friends. I'll leave you with this. I think the Problems with my dating in Germany can be summed up in one phrase. A friend of mine told me, Terry, you're a demisexual. It's like, demisexual? Yeah, you can't have sex with anyone unless there's some amount of emotional connection. It's like, oh, back home we just call that not being a sociopath. <laughs> Apparently in Berlin you need to qualify that. I'm gonna cry. <laughs>
Thank yeah, thanks Germany with all your techno wunderkind sausages and things. I don't speak German. I, I need... Kruger, you speak German. You what? Is... But you speak enough to not get killed. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure I speak enough from a lot of languages that I can kill. Like, I'm sure I can learn no, please stop in a lot of languages. Is don't tase me, bro, still a thing? Or am I kind of 10 years too late? I mean, I'll just, I will just move on. I kindly ask people to not tase me, bro, so sure. <laughs> See, there you go. But do it in German, and it's frightening. Anyway, uh, uh, speaking of uh, a frightening, um, uh, a friend of ours uh, watching the show, Sherry Ellen Baker, is having a stint removed, and uh, we wish you nothing but uh, good luck and best wishes for that. Uh, once again, we don't pray for people here at the Monday because uh, that's just um, you know uh, empty platitudes, but uh, we do uh, hope that everything is okay. Sherry, uh, please uh, be well and recover swiftly, and uh, make sure that you... Uh, watch the Monday Night Comedy Show from your your hospital room. That's that's a thing, right? Yeah. We can do that. Healing yeah, yeah. In fact, sneak out of your room in the hospital in the middle of the night and go to every monitor that is connected to the internet and uh, just do a loop of the Monday so we get more viewership. That's good. That's just good marketing. That's that's really yeah. Watch a lot of our old shows and and just leave it on on a loop. I'm pretty sure the internet will there's a button. I don't know how it works, but you know, that's fine. I used to be so technically savvy, and then I don't know what what happened to me, Kruger. I had a kid, and technology moves faster than us. That's true. I don't move very quick. Not that's maybe why I have the beaties. I got the beaties. Don't be like me, folks. Don't eat butter. And free base sugar. Don't do it. It's you know it'll drag you down. Uh, speaking of uh, free basing sugar, I have no, no, nothing really. Uh, one of our, our, our dear friends of the show, someone who's with us at the very beginning, who used to live in the Twin Cities and has since moved on to bigger and better things in San Francisco, California. Wonder Dave. If you don't know who Wonder Dave is, you need to love him on the internet. Go like him on Facebook, befriend him on Facebook, watch his, his live stream show. Oh my God, they're good. And uh, and and folks, uh, uh, if you uh, you know have the means, travel to San Francisco and ask if you can sleep on uh, his futon, because I'm pretty sure he has a futon. Everybody has a futon in San Francisco. There's a song about it. No. That was your cue to start singing the song, Kruger. The that song exist? shut up. A... <laughs> we'll figure it out. We we know enough musicians. Where we're going to write a futon song about Wonder Dave in San Francisco. Anyway, without further ado, folks, please put your hands together, everybody in the studio and everybody in the internet, everyone, East Coast, West Coast, hada hada for Wonder Dave. To the west. Hello. Hi everybody, it's me. I like that underneath me there's a thing that says you're in the show, everyone can see and hear you. That's good, that's good to know. Um, what's up? I do indeed uh, live in San Francisco, California. It's pretty fun. I think I'm a pretty good citizen of the Bay Area since I left. I think I, I've, gotten, I've gotten real West Coast since leaving. Uh, I'm, I think my major, well, first, I, like, there are a couple things that have happened to me out here that I think didn't happen to me when I lived in Minnesota. Uh, for instance, once I went into work and my boss said, hey, our paychecks uh, got in early because our accountant is going to Burning Man. Uh, so that was a fun thing that happened to me one time. I was like, oh, this is, I live in San Francisco now. I get it. Uh, and I'm a good, I moved to San Francisco. I'm a good sex positive person. Do you guys know what sex positive is? It's, it's when um, you're slutty and you have a useless degree. That's what it is. Just kidding. I do not have a degree. Pew, pew. Um, all right. Let's get in. Let's get into it. Let's get into where we're at in the world. Am I crying at podcasts? Yes, of course I am. That's what we've been driven to in this pandemic. It's very fun. Um, 
I I guess I'll just walk you through my pandemic timeline, I suppose. I can talk about things that have happened to me. We can kick it off in March when everyone was watching Tiger King, right? You remember the Tiger King era of the pandemic? That was fun. Um, my favorite thing in Tiger King was John Finlay, the, ti the Tiger King's first husband. Uh, you may recall him as the shirtless man who was missing some teeth. Uh, and I recall him as just sexy. Uh, super into that look. Uh, it's because I am damaged white trash. Uh, that's, that's, that's the appeal in case you're wondering what happens. Um, and honestly, if someone had told me, cause that guy's straight, like, I think that's the funniest part, right? Like he is not even gay. Tiger King got him anyway. Uh, he is wily. That's what's going on. Uh, and honestly, if someone had told me all I needed to bang hot rednecks was meth and a tiger, I could have had those things. I could have done it. I could have, I could have been at the top of my game so long ago. Um, and then we move on. We're continuing with the pandemic, right? We're just going to break down the news as we go. Um, this one flew under the radar. I think people did not notice it, uh, what with the pandemic and all. Uh, RuPaul was on NPR, the famous drag queen, uh, being interviewed by Terry Gross. And RuPaul, uh, Terry Gross was like, so you own 60,000, or Terry Gross said, so you own 6,000 acres of land in Wyoming. And RuPaul was like, girl, it is 60,000 acres. You add that zero, because uh, she... She deserves credit for owning 60,000 things. Uh, and Terry Gross was like, oh, sorry. Uh, what do you do with 60,000 acres of land in Wyoming? And RuPaul was like, oh, mostly like we lease rights to ranchers and oil and gas companies. And then some sleuth on the internet was like, hey guys, RuPaul is fracking. Um, that's, I was like, oh, wait, what? I'm sorry. Uh, and so it turns out uh, it's true. Uh, you can go to fracktracker.org and you can figure out where RuPaul's property line is. Uh, and on fracktracker.org, it just lights up real bright if there's uh, happening. And hope that I'm not freezing for you guys uh, as much as I am for my But Oh, hey, there we go. Okay. Uh, so yeah, bright lights for fracking. That's what's going on with the fracking, right? It's very exciting. And you're looking at RuPaul's property and you're like, ah, oh, no fracking, no fracking, no fracking, no fracking, no fracking. Oh, fracking, a lot of it, right over in this corner on the far western side. Very fun. Um, so yeah, the three Fs of drag. You got to be fierce. You got to be funny. You got to be fracking. That's what you got to do if you want to be successful. Um, and I guess I shouldn't be surprised that RuPaul is fracking because uh, she's always been groundbreaking. Thank you. That was a long way to go for that one. <laughs> I like that it just scrolls and is like, this is Wonder Dave, in case you forgot. Um Let's see, what happened next in the pandemic? I don't know, I've smoked so much weed. Uh, coincidentally, I have also gained 15 pounds. Um, just out here getting pandemic thick. Uh, it's, it's a real fun time. Um, and then next for entertainment, I decided to go down the rabbit hole of conspiracy theories. That was my next uh, entertainment moment, because why not? Um, I, I do notice the new banner, I am aware of it. Uh, put your favorite conspiracy theories on the new banner. That's what I want to see. Um, also just the word pandas. That's fun. So I, I love a lot of conspiracy theories have for a while. Real, real fun times. Love lizard people under the Denver airport. That is classic. Uh, it's a good one. Oldie goodie. Denver airport, super weird place. Might as well have lizard people. Um, uh, the moon landing was fake pandas. We did it. Uh, the moon landing was fake. That's a classic conspiracy theory, right? Like, uh, we love that one. It's fun. Uh, I enjoy the work of Stanley Kubrick. Why not let him fake a moon landing? That sounds super cool. Let him hide clues in The Shining. Uh, why not? Um, and then uh, going on, oh, I found a cool political conspiracy theory that I thought was really fun. It was about Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, right? Because uh, the right hates her. Because uh, she is smart and uh, not white and got elected, uh, makes them real mad when you have all three of those things at once. Um, so here's the conspiracy theory about her though, and I think it's great. Uh, it is that she is part of a coven of witches in New York who are using sex magic to cast spells at the president. And if you are trying to make me not like her, that is the worst way to do it. Come on, that sentence just keeps getting cooler. Coven of witches, pretty cool. S casting spells, all right, they're, they're active witches. 
sex magic. That's the coolest. It has sex and magic. Come on. Like, what if you just went to a magic show and they were like, and now this penis, wobbly, wobbly, wobbly. Um, it's very fun. It's not a hard penis. That's why it was wobbly. Um, and then, of course, there is the mother of all conspiracy theories, right? The big one right now. Um, I am, of course, talking about QAnon. That's right, QAnon. You might not be familiar with it. Um, it's this whole theory that the government uh, is secretly run by a cabal of pedophiles. And I was like, Donald Trump is president. Uh, I could be on board. Uh, but then they're like, no, he is taking him down. He's here to fight those pedophiles. Also, the pedophiles are what? Satanists. Um, and I was like, all right, we've gone too far now. Uh, and here's the deal. It's obviously fake. Uh, and without even going into the the reasons that it's fake, I will I'll I'll do the big I'll do the one like where it started. Okay, it first started on 4chan and 8chan, um, which are just like Reddit with even less rules. That's what's going on on especially 8chan. It's like Reddit, but less rules, even more poorly run because he's hanging out on 8chan, B and Q or she. We don't know. Um, it's the guy who runs 8chan, by the way. Uh, he took it over. Uh, but. Here is, here is what 8chan is, if you're not familiar with 8chan. It's just like a, a, a board where you post shit, you post pictures. Um, a lot of its content is like weird, uh, po 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 I can't even say it, My Little Pony porn. Uh, it's fun. It's just a My Little Pony sucking a dick. And what does the My Little Pony have as a cutie mark? Uh, probably a swastika. That tends to be a real common thing. Um, so any, any place that is filled uh, with My Little Ponies sucking dicks with swastikas on their butts uh, is not a credible source. That's it. That's all. It's, is, is it the same place that does the My Little Pony dick sucking swastikas? Then you don't need to believe that theory. That's, that's how common sense. It's how it works. You shouldn't. But people are into it, and I hate it. Um, I hope they get eaten by the lizard people under the Denver airport, because those, real. Um... All right, what else is going on? What else have I done to entertain myself? Oh, true crime, super into true crime. I love it. Um, here's the deal, I'm just a huge fan of murder. Um, nope, nope, that's not what I wanna say. That is incorrect. Uh, I would like there to be zero murders. That's how many murders I would like. I would like none murders. Uh, however, if you do do a murder, uh, you are obligated to have a podcast about it, perhaps uh, a documentary series, depending upon how cool the murder was, right? Like what's going on? Uh, cool, again, the wrong word. I like the document. You get it, you understand. Um, I have noticed though that when it comes to true crime stuff, I do have a bit of a gender bias uh, going on. I have observed this in, in the pandemic time. Uh, for instance, let's say uh there's a couple because spoiler alert you know who's gonna kill you your significant other and honestly during this pandemic i've spent a lot of time alone with me uh and i would understand if someone killed me i get it i can be pretty annoying um but uh that's who's gonna kill you your spouse right so let's say in this fictional murder documentary there's a couple uh their names are jim and gina uh and i hear that jim murdered gina I'm immediately like, that piece of shit. What is happening? I am mad at him. Uh, however, if I hear that Gina murdered Jim, I'm like, what did he do? <laughs> What's going on here? Uh, oh, 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 she's just a piece of shit who really likes collecting life insurance? Okay, okay, I'm back on board. Uh, it happens, you guys. Um, I don't know what I want to talk to you guys about. I did mention, I mentioned being uh, white trash earlier. Um, it's a fun thing that I am. Um, a lot of people object to the term white trash. They don't, they don't like it. Um, however, uh, in my defense, I would like to say that uh, it's my life. I can use whatever descriptors I want. Also, growing up, uh, my family was white and our backyard was full of trash. So it seems accurate to me is all, all I'm saying. Um, my ultimate uh, white trash murder fan wonder day. That is the most accurate descriptor of me ever. I love it. Uh, I do. I, here's my ultimate white trash cred because I'm so classy that people have trouble believing me. Um, probably since I've got this mustache in the pandemic, they, they, it's much more believable. Uh, I, uh, 
the house I was born in, this is this is my ultimate redneck cred, right? Um, had an outhouse. That's just a fact about me you can know now. Um, don't worry, we got indoor plumbing eventually, but we, uh, we had a very old outhouse. It still had the corn cob bin. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar with the corn cob bin, uh, before we, as a society, uh, had toilet paper, we used to wipe our butts with corn cobs. Not the kind with the kernels still on them, uh, we would eat the corn and then reduce, reuse, and recycle. Uh, that was that was the whole plan. And when I was little, I wiped my butt with a corn cob the wrong way, and that's why I'm gay. Uh, all right, uh, I will close on this joke because uh, I want to retire it uh, when the election happens. I really want this joke retired. Help me, everyone. Um, our vice president, his name is Mike Pence. Perhaps you have heard of him. Um, as a gay comedian, I will admit that Mike Pence is the Vince McMahon to my Stone Cold Steve Austin. Like, you couldn't have created a better villain for me. Um, however, Mike Pence thinks that you can electroshock the gay away. I know he thinks it, because he said it with his mouth. But little does he know, I'm into that. I've been Wonder Dave. Thank you for having me on the Monday Night Comedy Show. Yay! Follow me on your social medias. I'm at Team Wonder Dave. Bring that host back up. I feel like I did my time. What's you going on? There the he internet. is. Look Give at it that. up for Wonder Dave. Hey, Woo! I got a cover. Oh, what up? Hey, oh. hey, Wonder Dave, it's me, Andy. Oh, it's Andy. Hi, Andy. Andy. We've got our ex comic on stage, and we're doing the social distancing thing. And we didn't, oh, yeah, that makes sense. And stuff. That's very but, responsive. But hey, clap for yourself, everybody. In the so, Andy, we uh, we did have some people talking about uh, active witches. So that's <laughs> people are definitely paying attention. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, good. so good. Wonder Day, we missed you, and we want you to come back very soon. Okay. Okay, I would like to come back. I would love well, to come back and visit. Okay, we love you. You look fantastic, you. by the way. This this pandemic's done you well. You look good. Thank you. I scan as well. All right, all right. Bring everybody up. Yeah, sure. Let's bring, yeah, let's bring this job. Oh, we're all who, who we're all having a good time. We got, we got uh, a bunch of people here. Oh, um, hey, this has been a virtual show, but we're not done yet. Oh, hold on, hold on. Oh yeah, Dave. Oh, oh yeah, I host a bunch of virtual shows. Follow me on social media. I'm at Team Wonder Dave on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Find out about them. Um, actually, Mary Mack is headlining my show this Saturday. Um, hey. Minnesota Regional. Uh, she's she's headlining Smilf, which is straight men I'd like to friend. Uh. <laughs> it's a I sexually harass straight male comedians, and then at the end of the show, a woman headlines. So isn't that fun? So <laughs> come on out to that, everyone. Uh, it's called Smilf. Look it up on Eventbrite. At Team Wonder Dave. Social media. Goodbye. Are, are we doing Bye. 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 Thank you so much. Hey, guys. Do you like dogs? Love dogs. I hear a couple of people saying. I uh, love dogs. Well. If you don't love dogs, go fuck yourself. But uh, the only reason we book our next comic is because he owns the best dog in the world. It's Momo with his Momo special friend, Joe Cocazello. Do you see him? Do you see Joe? There's Joe Cocazello. Everybody clap for Joe and Momo. Oh. I love you, This is great. Momo. This is, uh, this is delightful. Are we, uh, we live? Which camera do I look at? This one? All right, okay. All right, so uh, I am, uh, I don't know about you guys, but I'm missing, uh, I'm missing the old fun America. Like, I, I don't know, like it's, uh, you know, where a cane of beer didn't have to tell you how cold it was. Like you just knew how cold it was because you were holding the fucking can. Like it's, <laughs> like, <laughs> like we're car Right, we're like cartoon strips and newspapers. We're funny, except for Dagwood, Family Circle, and Kathy. Uh, also, Marmaduke. What, what, what was funny about a giant red dog? It was nothing. Nothing funny about that. Uh, where we ate at Fun Ruckers or some other like flared out restaurant. I miss the good old days. I, I just, 
I don't know. Uh, I'm just a New Yorker trying to be a Minnesotan. Uh, one of the things that I love about Minnesota over New York is uh, you could walk into any establishment and use their bathroom. Just that's just, It seems like a simple thing, but it is a perk that Minnesotans have over, like you can't just walk into any establishment in New York and use their bathroom. You have like, it's, it's either, you must buy something, no bathroom, no public bathroom. Like, unless they, unless they know you, then it's okay. Like it's, it, it's like, oh, American spirit, yellow Wolverine. Yes, use bathroom, it's okay. <laughs> it's, like, it's, <laughs> you have to jiggle handle, it's little sticky. Like it's, <laughs> I just, I, I, I love that about Minnesota. Um, in New York, that what you do is you just piss on the street. That's, that's what you do in New York. You just don't, you just between two cars. Uh, and then you just make eye contact with people as they walk by. That's a super fun game. Yeah, pissing. What? What's it to you? <laughs> um, so uh, Greyhound Racing, uh, I don't know if you guys have heard, but uh, it's, uh, they, they're finally ending it, which is great because Greyhound Racing is inhumane. I, as, as you can see, I love dogs. Um, but uh, I also do love drinking and betting on animals that are racing each other. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So I'm kind of torn. And like, I, I know that they're like, their lives aren't fun. They don't have happy lives. It's like, you know, it's so, all right. So, uh, so I was doing a little research into Greyhound racing and back in the day, they would just have a live rabbit that the Greyhounds would chase. And in the 1920s, there was this guy who was like, uh, I love rabbits. I, I don't want, why do we have to kill so many rabbits? I love these rabbits. So he invented the mechanical rabbit that goes around all the dog tracks. So, so I have the solution. So let's, let's make mechanical fucking greyhounds. <laughs> right? And let them race yeah. around the track. It'll be like battle bots, except with fucking greyhounds and they're chasing the mechanical rabbit, mechanical greyhounds chasing it. It would, I, I, see, I see nothing wrong with that. That is totally a humane, we still love dogs. Uh, all right, so uh, let's see. Um, uh, let's see. Do, do, do. Um, so I work out. I avoid uh, excess exposure to the sun. I apply lotion. Uh, but somehow I'm still getting old people skin. Like it's starting to... <laughs> like I got like a... When I run, I got a small case of tit jiggle now. Like I never had it before. Like it's, like it's just a... It's a little case. It's not like... <laughs> It's not like, you know, when you see like a, a large chested lady running braless and you're like, you're going to knock yourself out. You are going to fucking, it's going to like wake up at a couple hours later. Like what happened? Uh, <laughs> uh, so I may have a drinking problem. Uh, some people can be responsible with alcohol. I am not one of those people. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, but I, I, I like, I, I'm not one of those people that's going to order. I don't like O'Doul's. I don't like beer. I like my whiskey. So I need like, I need like, oh, right? Like, oh, like <laughs> non-alcoholic whiskey. Oh, Jameson's like, it's, and it still tastes terrible, yeah, but instead of, <laughs> instead of passing out in a random place in my apartment, I actually fall asleep in my bed. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, so, um, if you get a text from me, uh, so I like to use the, uh, the, uh, the lady uh, Siri on my phone. I like to use that on the phone. Uh, if you get a text, I like to I like, so I'll send it. If I send you a text and I'm using that, I will end the text with dictated, not read, which is what the boss used to do when his secretary was, was taking notes as to say, if somebody fucked this up, I didn't reread it. It's this, it's my fucking secretary. So uh, it's, so I say dictated, not read at the end because half the time Siri fucks up what I'm trying to say. And it's like, you, you try to say fuck and it turns into duck. It's like, it's like it just random. Like it, one time I was like, uh, I was like, hey, call my friend, Nick Anthony. And it was like, okay, from now on, I'll call you camping. I was like, what the fuck does that even mean? Who has ever been like, I would like to, you to refer to me as from now on as camping. Like it's, Mr. Camping is my father's name. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I used to know how to spell words. I used to remember where things were on a map. I used to remember phone numbers. Now it's all on the phone. I, like, it's, I used to remember phone numbers. Now the only phone number I can remember, 516-488-2985. 
That is the home phone number. It's the landline to the house I had in Long Island as a kid that I grew up in. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just burned because it I grew up in the 80s. And in the 80s, it was burned into your brain that if you didn't remember your goddamn home phone number, you ended up on a fucking milk carton. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and they never used it. <laughs> And they never used the good photo of you on the milk carton. It was never the fucking third grade photo with the fucking lasers behind you. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, it's always the one where you have the weird haircut with the side spike. <laughs> oh, God, the spiky hair. Remember the spiky hair? Yeah. It's fucking Jerbo jeans and spiky hair. Boy, we made some good decisions back then. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> all right, all right, let's, uh, big carry strug dismount. Let's, let's get the hell out of here, right? Like, um, so, uh, uh, Canada has officially closed the border with America. Yeah. That's like, it's, you know, it's right. I'm actually, I'm actually kind of surprised they haven't built a wall. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's official. America is Canada's Mexico. <laughs> we're gonna be we're gonna be sitting outside whatever Canada's Home Depot is. <laughs> Canadians are like, go back to your own country. You fucking ruining it, you dirty Americans. <laughs> All right, I gotta get out of here. I'm Joe Cogazello. Have a wonderful night. Come on, come on, let's get out of here. Keep it going for Joe Cocazello, folks. Joe Cocazello and Momo. Momo, the best dog. Best dog on the internet is Momo. Oh, my God. Oh. Ah. <laughs> now, folks, the... Uh, the election's coming up November 3rd. Everybody knows this. If you don't know that, you know, please vote anyway, I guess. I, um, it's weird that you wouldn't know that. Um, but uh, there are some people who are uh, producing amazing, amazing pieces of art and uh, biting satire up until the election. Vain Mainstream is one of them. And uh, it, uh, Vain Mainstream is a friend of the Monday Night Comedy Shows uh, and uh, has been producing music videos uh, every week, a new video uh, up until the election day. And uh, who knows what's going to happen on election day, uh, but the videos get darker and darker and more and more serious. And something, uh, I, I hope that these videos go viral um, and everybody gets a chance to, to, to watch them. We're very, very grateful to Vain Mainstream for uh, letting us uh, show all of these music videos. Uh, we're on episode five, which is called Cage the Animals. So you can kind of guess where it's going. Uh, so put your hands together and please enjoy from Vain Mainstream, Cage the Animals, episode five of Right Culture. These are animals. They're coming into our country. We're getting them out. They come in again. We're getting them out. We need strong immigration laws. We have the weakest laws in the entire world. We have laws that are laughed at on immigration. So when the MS-13 comes in, when the other gang members come into our country, I refer to them as animals. And guess what? I always will. Who are you trying to get crazy with, I say? Don't you know I'm loco? Don't you know I'm a fool for 
compassion and several rights of the silver line. We want the human life. And we all share a common goal. Yeah, we want the human lives. But we still gotta change the animals. No darkness in love, they're on a leash. And that's why no dark whistles should be out of reach. They're bringing drugs and crime and the rapists too. And maybe some are good people. I don't want to assume. Don't you know? Don't you know? It's a cruel kind of action. Threatening my kind with your simple mind. We want the human life. We want it. We want it. animals the other day and I was met with rebuke they said they're people they're not people these are animals and we have to be very very The Animals by Vain Mainstream. Vain Mainstream. Vain Mainstream. Not only do they get better and better, they get darker and darker, and uh, for good reason. This uh, whole country is a fucking nightmare fueled hellscape and uh we are the only ones who can change that on november 3rd so please for the love of everything that you believe in whatever god you believe in be it the internet blogs or podcasts or jesus whatever it doesn't matter just please vote on november 3rd make the change please 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 seriously i have like five bucks in my wallet right now it's yours if you vote on November 3rd. That's all I have. Can't that, I can't do that. That's illegal. Never mind. I will keep that $5 and I will buy an ice cream. Actually, a pint, a pint of uh, keto friendly stuff. I, I'm trying to lose some. It doesn't matter. Nothing matters anymore. Anyway, that does it for our 593rd Monday Night Comedy Show. Thus ends the show. Let's say some thank yous to very important people, starting with our staff here at the Monday Night Comedy Show. J Money, the motherfucking hawk. Kaka, we love you. Thank you for being here. Uh, she's not here in studio, but she is here in spirit. St. May of the underground slash internet dark web. You name it, the information super of high rate. Uh, Ronnie Goldstein slash Vuck. We don't know how to pronounce your new last name, Ronnie, because we're too embarrassed to ask you. 
So maybe you could give us a pronunciation uh, in the comments. I don't know, but Ronnie, you're here with us. Um, and to everybody at Nano Taco Studios, you can clap while I say your names. Everybody, Cat, Shane, Whitney, Carly, Jeff. Uh, who, did I miss anybody? V, Mercy, Victor, our resident troll who we love so much. I don't know if you've been. Oh, what's happening? There he is. There's V. There he is. Best head of hair on a man I have seen in a long time. Woo, woo. Uh, a couple of plugs um, on, on on Friday last. Uh, Chris Maddox album from Stand Up Records uh, just was released. It's country le country music legend Chris Maddox. Please pick it up. Everywhere uh, audio is sold. Apple Music, Amazon doesn't matter. Go to StandUpRecords.com and uh, get that download. It's only ten bucks, and uh, you can uh, help. Uh, Chris, uh, secure a third album from uh, Stand Up Records. Uh, very big congratulations to our friend Wendy Mayberry, who's uh, also album on Stand Up Records. She's not from around here, was just submitted for a Grammy. So if you have friends or family who are voting for the Grammys, uh, we don't want to, you know, push you either way, but maybe vote for our friend Wendy Mayberry. That would be cool um, because... Uh, Stand Up Records deserves uh, at least, they deserve 100,000 Grammy Awards, but they already have one. Why not make it two? So um, congratulations to both of them. They're, they're both fantastic albums. Everybody, on just go to Stand Up Records and buy the, buy the farm. Um, speaking of farms, no, I got nothing. That's the end of our show. So um, <laughs> thank you so much for being a part of it. Uh, if you did like it uh, and you have the means, tip the performers on Venmo.com backslash uh, Monday Night Comedy Show, and we'll make sure that all that money gets to the performers and uh, the staff of the Monday and Nanataka Studios. And we just want to thank you so much for joining us. Uh, be sure to share this as often as you can and say, I was watching it live, but you can watch it while you poop. That's what we tell people. That's what I tell my, I tell my parents. Hey, while you're pooping. That's not what I say. Anyway, that's the end of the show. 593, we're counting down to 600, which is coming. But before that is our Halloween show on October 26th. And we're going to do it right, even though it's a global pandemic. God damn it, Halloween is the best holiday in the world. So put your hands together for choosing comedy during a global pandemic. And that does it for the Monday Night Comedy Show. Stay tuned. Just keep watching. Nano Taco is going to play something cool yeah you're gonna play something cool cool keep watching just you know be sure to like nano taco studios on facebook thanks guys stay awesome you only have this one life so better start fucking living it stay awesome see you next monday <laughs>
But there is a house on top, and it's haunted. Yeah, every night. Every night I hear voices, footsteps, and lights get turned on and off. I hear silverware clattering in the drawer all the time. Sometimes a knife or two end up on the floor. That's not that creepy, really. <laughs> yeah. Strange and scariest, though. Maybe even the least sexy experience that I've ever had was the very first night, a few days ago, that I spent in the house. I wasn't even finished moving in. There were Amazon boxes everywhere. I was laying down on an old futon mattress uh, watching a, a video on my phone. When suddenly I get these pins and needles, you know, that feeling, your feet falling asleep. Except it wasn't on my feet. It felt like fingers giving me a massage. And I was freaked out. But it felt good, so I said, thank you very much and good night. And then I turned off my light and tried to sleep. Eventually I passed out. And when I woke up, my closet door was open. Survival gear and clothing was on the floor. But other than that, everything was untouched. I guess whoever my unseen roommate is, it just wanted to check out who I was on my first night. At least, you know, can't complain. I'm not entirely alone in this goddamn fucking apocalypse.